So what's innovation? This gentleman, Joseph Schumpeter, an Austrian-American economist who some regard as possibly the greatest economist of the last century, uh, gave us a very simple definition of innovation that's still widely used. And his definition was, innovation is the successful commercial exploitation of new ideas. It's not just new ideas for the sake of new ideas. It's new ideas that you can commercially exploit. And he said there were three ways in which organizations could do that. One is to come up with new products and services. Um, in this way, you offer some new benefits to customers, which often they're willing to pay for. So you can generate a new source of revenues from these new ideas. That's how you commercially exploit new ideas. Another way is to develop new processes, new ways of manufacturing products, or new ways of delivering services. In that way, you can gain efficiencies. You can do more with less in less time. Uh, you could perhaps have a higher quality product that costs less. And that's how you get commercial value. And finally, you can combine these. You can do both at the same time. You can develop a new product or service while at the same time finding a new way to operate. Uh, and that is a new business model entirely. You generate a new source of revenues while reducing your cost structure. I mean, look at examples of this in a second. But we can also think of innovations as varying in terms of how new they are. And we can look at that on two dimensions. The newness of the technology that they use and the newness of the customer benefit that they offer. So accordingly, we can have incremental innovations that just use a marginally new technology to deliver a marginally different need. And in fact, the great majority of innovations are of this sort. There's nothing wrong with that. It's more incremental, but the great majority of innovations are that. We can have technological breakthroughs, those that use some really new technology, but to fulfill an existing need. And again, I'll give examples in a minute. Or we can have market breakthroughs, those that use no new technology, but actually deliver some new benefit to customers. And finally, we can have radical innovations, those that use genuinely new technologies to deliver new benefits. Let's look at some examples. The Kodak Brownie came out over 100 years ago, introduced by Kodak. It was radical. And to understand why, we have to compare it to what came before. This is what came before. Glass plate technology, very different technology, very messy. So technologically, this was new. But this was also a customer breakthrough. Notice, it says any schoolboy or schoolgirl can take good pictures. Uh, with the glass plate, you had to be a professional. Uh, you had to dress up like an astronaut. Uh, you were usually male. You were not a family member. And this was $1. Uh, of course, they made all that money on the rolls. Uh, so very interesting business model innovation as well. Often, you know, the examples I gave you are products, but increasingly innovation is about not offering something tangible and physical, but an intangible experience or benefit. All these are service innovations, and we are very familiar with them now. Anyone know about Virgin Galactic? What's the service there? These offer experiences. Um, and often, these service innovations involve not just a product innovation or service innovation, and not just a process innovation, but both at the same time, a business model innovation. They often involve technology. They always bring significant new benefits. And they simultaneously generate new revenues while reducing costs. And as we're in a bookstore, a classic example is Amazon. We were talking about the internet. This was a new business model innovation when it came out. It was a radical innovation that made use of technology. It used the internet, but it also delivered significantly new customer benefits. Potentially, it offered customers an infinite assortment of books. Any book anywhere in the world that someone was willing to sell through Amazon could be bought through Amazon. It was cheaper. You could order at any time of day, any day of the year. You got customer reviews. You got recommendations based on big data, all this kind of stuff. And in contrast to bricks and mortar, obviously, that's what it was replacing. And why was it a business model innovation? On the one hand, it was offering new customer benefits and generating new revenues while simultaneously reducing the cost structure and radically reducing costs. 
How is it generating new revenues? One way is through exploiting the long tail. There are only a very small number of books that generate a lot of sales, blockbusters. Very few are blockbusters. Very many books, the long tail, generate a small amount of sales. And bricks and mortar, which do you think they cater to? Foils, do you think they cater to the small books? Not really. They'll have blockbusters. So they pick up only that slice of the revenues. The big slice of revenues under the long tail curve doesn't get picked up by bricks and mortar. But Amazon can pick that up. So a huge new set of revenues can be picked up. And how can they do that? Because their cost structure, their operating structure, is completely different. They don't need to have a physical location in a high street, which is expensive, which requires holding inventory, and so forth. If everybody says innovation is so important, why do so many struggle with doing it again and again and again? What are the challenges they face? Well, people have pointed out that, oddly or ironically, it's success that sort of sows the seeds of subsequent failure. They argue that successful incumbent firms actually seem to uh, stall, ignore, or fight new ideas, whereas it's the small, hungry entrepreneurs that jump at them. 